Hi everyone and welcome back to our skill system series in UE4. In this episode we're continuing work on our UI side of our skill system, focusing on the tooltip that will appear when you hover over each skill, telling you more information about that skill, how much it costs and so on and so forth. So the way we're going to create this is first of all, first uh, we need to set up the tooltip widget and what that's going to look like. So I'm going to create a new widget and we're going to call this one tooltip underscore UI and open it up. Now I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel because we don't need it. And then we're going to go into create a size box. And the size box, we're going to set up a minimum uh, width and height um, with a maximum width as well. So the minimum width we're going to do at 50, minimum height we'll do 100, and max desired width we'll do 300. Change your fill screen to desired so you know what you're looking at and what you're working with. And then we're going to add a border to this. Click on your border and let's change some uh, appearance settings for this. So I'm going to change my brush and I'll use the same background I've been using for my UI elements. Inside my border, this is where we're going to put the information related to our skill. So in here we're going to do a vertical box. And inside the vertical box, we're going to have a text for the skill name. We're going to have text for the skill description. We're also going to have text for how much it costs and whether or not there's any tiers left for it to purchase in. So you can duplicate the, t uh, the purchasing of it or any other uh, limitations or requirements. So other information like warnings, like you must be able to, must have purchased the previous skill, for example, uh, to do so. So this first one is the skill name. So for simplicity, let's just put in skill name. And let's name the text blocks as we go. So at the top here, we're going to name this one skill name text and tick the is verbal box because all these things are going to be changing in the game. Next one is going to be description. Text. Tick is verbal. And I'll change the size of this one to 16, so a bit smaller. Next is going to be the cost of it. So cost text, again, tick is verbal. And that one, we're gonna have uh, 16 again, but this time I'm going to right align it. So scroll down and you'll see the justifications, light to the right. And then at the bottom here, the last one, and that's gonna be, uh, I don't know, restrictions, I guess, restriction date text. And tick is verbal. And this is gonna be center aligned. And we're going to change the color of it as well to be um, different as well. We'll make it uh, make it uh, a sort of ready color, and change the size of it to be sixteen two. And there we have our tooltip. Hit compile and save this. We'll come back to this in a moment. Next, we're going to go and just set up the ability to show it over each of the skills. Now, depending on what version of Unreal you're in, this is version uh, 24, uh, so 4.24, 4 sorry. And if you click on the skill button UI's root in the hierarchy, you'll see that there's an option to set a uh, tooltip widget in the behavior section. Now, to do that, you need to do it in the graph. So on my pre-construct, I'm going to right-click and create the widget first. And we need to choose our tooltip widget. We then take the return value and set tooltip like so. The target though is not your return value. Your return value should go into the widget and the target is itself. Click compile and then play the game. So now when you hover your mouse over each of these, it builds and shows that tooltip for each icon. Okay, and when you let hover off of it, it disappears. So there's a built-in tooltip uh, feature into the game engine. So how do you actually get the data from the button to the tooltip? Well, let's go into the tooltip UI and let's go to the graph and add a new variable. And let's type in the name skill data. And the variable name for a variable type for this, sorry, is the skill data structure. And in there is going to be all the information you need. So let's uh, set up our uh, information here so we're going to do it on the contract or pre-construct up to you I'm going to do it on a pre-construct 
And on the pre-construct, we're gonna set these four text values to this skill data's information. So let's do one by one. Skill name, get set text. And we'll do set text there. And in there, you can then drag your skill data out, right click split and drag your skill name into it. Next, description, get set text. And you'll see set text there. And again, description goes into there. Next one is a bit different because uh, it's an integer. You need to use the format text node for this. So let's do that. Drag your cost text variable out, set text. And then your in text is going to be a format text node. This allows you to combine integers with actual text uh, as well. So we'll go in here, um, requires, and then curly bracket, cost, open close curly bracket, perk, points. And when you hit enter, the parameter will show up asking for the cost which is gonna come from there. And lastly, we've got the restriction. So restriction stuff, we'll drag out here, get, and we'll say, um, uh, for now, we'll set the text of this to nothing. Uh, we'll do restrictions in a later video. Hit compile, and that's it. So now, the trick is now linking that skill data up with the skill button. So tick the eyeball icon to make it editable and then expose it on spawn. Click compile and save. Go back to your skill button and see where you said the create tooltip UI widget. Change it to none, then change it back to tooltip UI. And it should now ask for the skill data. All you do is drag your skill data variable out and into that pin. And that is it. Hit play. And now your values are now put into your things. Now notice how some of my text is issued, has issues where it goes outside of the realms of the tooltip. So let's change that and make our tooltip a bit more visible. So I'm gonna go into my tooltip UI and on the description box here and the skill name, you can do it both, but mostly the description is gonna be the one that is the main issue. We want to change it so it wraps the text at the maximum value of the size box. So the maximum value of the size box was 300. So on description, we're going to wrap text at 300. And then we're going to go into the uh, name as well and change that to 300. In fact, let's make it a little bit less so it doesn't cause any issues we know. So we'll make it 280. And you can do it for the rest if you want. That's fine as well. We'll do 280 and 280. Hit compile. So now push play. And you can see the tooltip now wraps itself. So let's now do the um, make it a bit more clearer. So I'm going to go into my border here and let's go into the brush color. And I'll change the alpha here back up to one so it's fully in the dark, like so. And let's make it a bit darker. So again, so it just stands out a bit. Hit compile, hit play. And now you've got your tooltip working quite nicely. And that's it, that's all you have to do. So what we're gonna do is make it so that when we click on one of these and purchase it, we'll make the tooltip show that it has been purchased. So let's go to tooltip UI and go to graph and add a new variable saying it is purchased. So if it is purchased, we need to update the tooltip uh, information to reflect that. So in other words, we're gonna get rid of the cost uh, text value. So for this, we need to bind it and do other things, similar to what we've done in the past when uh, wanting an update a widget once it's been made. So let's create a custom event here 
calling update tooltip. And on the update tooltip, we're going to drag is purchased out, which is get, and we're going to check whether or not it's true or false. If it is purchased, we're going to change the uh, cost text here to show no text here. So I'm just going to go set text and leave it as blank. Next, we need to do. Next thing we need to do, sorry, is bind the update tooltip here to an event which is going to be triggering the is purchased here. And this is purchased got to be linked to a uh, to that skill button. So to do that, we need to make it editable. So tick the editable button and click compile. Next, we're going to go into the skill button and go to when we click on it, and you'll see where we do it is purchased here. We now need to do that same thing here on the tooltip. Now the easiest way of doing that is when you go up and create the tooltip widget is we store that tooltip widget as a variable. So return value out, promote to variable, and we call it my tooltip. And we connect that up like so. Now we've got that reference at the bottom here Let's just put it just before the set call set visible again. We can drag the my tooltip out, get, and then set is purchased to be the same as this one. So I can just drag it from there to there. With that done, we can then drag my tooltip out and do update tooltip. And that must come after you set that Boolean. And hit compile. And that is it. So now when I can purchase my tooltips, they should change what they say. And there you go. The required amount disappears. Nice. And last little uh, little touch we're going to add to it is put a little bit of space in between the requires and the description. So on the requires here, I'm going to add some padding to the top of this. To uh, Let's do uh, yeah, to 20. And click compile play and now you've got a bit of spacing which is a bit nicer and there you go and there are your tool tips for your skills in the next episode we're going to cover the idea of the restrictions so making it so that for example locksmith can only be unlocked when this one has been purchased so we're going to set up prerequisites for the skills so they remain unavailable until the prerequisite has been purchased if you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where that video plus many others is available from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. This wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you so much. If you like what I do and have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future content, leave a comment below in the uh, well, comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.